Hey guys, welcome back. I am afraid Paul will not be able to join us for this video. He actually had to work, but he did drop the car off for me and we're gonna attempt to fix it now that we have a definitive diagnosis on the malfunctioning system with the car. If you remember from the last video, I plugged in my auto ingenuity, which was able to give variable valve time advance information. And we can see that the right-handed camshaft was stuck in its full advanced position. Now that gives us our definitive direction and combined with all of our fuel trim analysis and everything else that we did in our fast tech procedure, we know 100% scientifically, this is definitely a variable valve timing issue, which by the way, I did look up. It's, it is called AVCS, active valve control system. It's, not something I'm intimately familiar with, which actually is also a problem because I couldn't really find a lot of information on the 2009 model. We'll get into that a little bit later, but uh, some of the electrical tests I'm gonna do, I really recommend you not do them unless you're very familiar with what you're doing because this particular design, according to the wiring diagram I pulled up, uh, there's no indication of the polarity on the wiring diagram or the ground side or positive side switching mechanism. So that's going to come into play as I have to discover that myself. Not doing it properly, you will fry this engine computer. So just a heads up if you're going to try this on your own. So with the caveats out of the way, we now know what our variables are. We either have some issue with the PCM control to the VVT, I'm sorry, the AVCS system. We know that it's not an ECM problem, but there could be an open or some short circuit or something along the way to the actual solenoid that drives the camshaft positioning. We could have an oil control flow issue. This is a hydraulic system like most of these are where oil control is used to position the camshaft accordingly to get your advance and whatnot. The other possibility that it could be is a mechanical failure with the actual system. We know scientifically this is an AVCS fault. We don't know exactly what the issue is, so that's what we're gonna try to find out. So let's head over to the car and see what we can do. Well, one of my first challenges is just a steric hindrance one, and that is accessing the solenoids on the car is kind of a pain, especially on the right-hand side, which is where we have an issue. I can actually see what clearly is the solenoid uh, here on the left side, so that one is easily accessible, and that's good because since we're reasonably within range on the left hand, that gives me a positive control that I can use to look at some voltage readings and things like that once I map this system out. Uh, the right side of the car, however, not nearly so convenient as the power steering reservoir is in the way. There's a bracket over it, um, induction in the way. So some disassembly required on this side. And I really um, want to avoid that as much as possible. So I'll probably have to take that apart, but what I want to do is get sort of a baseline on my guy over here so I know what I'm looking for. So one of the other issues I've got is a lack of information. I did pull a wiring diagram. This is from a 2009 model with the turbo, and we've got our solenoids here for the oil flow control for the AVCS. However, our problem is when we follow this to the next page, we can see that I have no labeling here, so there's no indication of driver control theory, and there's not even polarity given here. So my first step is gonna to be to map that out. So my first step is gonna to be to use a grounded test light, and luckily this connector is just right here. There we go. Okay, then using the grounded test light, we're gonna test our terminals here and nothing there. That actually right there tells me I'm on the left-hand side, so we know this solenoid is completely functional. And that right there basically tells me with 90% accuracy my circuitry. And that is, this is going to be a power side switched and we've got constant ground. So if I go over here, we're gonna see that that's gonna be verified and the light is, is too minimal to light up, so let me dim the light. So it looks like we probably have a five volt reference going on there would be my guess, but let's see if that's showing up in the, yeah, that's showing up. So we now have mapped our circuit out. Again, that's clearly uh, must be five volts there. I'm actually just going to go ahead and test that 
real quick just to verify. Okay, and there it is, we can see there. So we've now got our circuit mapped out, at least on this side, so that I could take some readings a little bit later and make sure I don't fry the computer. What I want to do is get a scoped reading because I don't really have indication of whether this is a pulse width modulated system or whatever, so a scope is going to be able to catch whatever it is so that I'll get a little more information. Let's see if we can... Uh, hear the solenoid activate on this side. So let me set up some jumper wires and see if we can do that. All right, this is super easy since the battery's just right here. I've just got some jumper wires that I connected to the solenoid. We're gonna go and touch the negative here and we'll listen for the click. Let me put the microphone nearby. Okay, certainly you can hear that. Okay, so we have a good method of testing our solenoid now. All right, a lot of directions we can go from here, but what I'm going to do is just basically repeat that test on the right side of the engine, validate that the solenoid has functionality. Now, mind you, and we've seen a couple videos actually before where just because a solenoid or relay clicks doesn't mean you're getting the flow or contact from it. So that's actually what I believe is wrong with this car, in my opinion, is that we've got an oil flow blockage. So the solenoid's probably going to work, but it just isn't giving the function of delivering the oil flow. So let's just verify that it works and we'll go from there. All right, there is actually a fair amount of disassembly required on this side with a the power steering reservoir and then a bracket that's right over everything. It's just totally inconvenient. But anyway, I got everything removed. And what I want to do is I want to map this circuit out as well. And I can't reach the battery negative here. So I'm going to go to uh, battery positive. It doesn't matter. And there's my test light there testing the ground. So let's map this circuit out here. Uh, we're going to probably on this side find a ground. And we do right there. And of course, um, a little bit there from 5 volt reference. So... We've got that mapped out, perfect. And it's gonna be easiest if I T-pin this because it's kinda of hard to get my jumper wires onto the solenoid. Um, just all the more reason why I wanna make sure I map the circuit out accurately so I don't fry the PCM. So let me do that. All right, this time I can't reach the battery so I'm going to use my power probe as a jumper wire. And See if we can hear it click. Oh yeah. Sure you can hear that? Okay, so um, the other thing is, uh, I was just thinking I was gonna do a bunch of fancy stuff with the scope and everything, looking at the duty cycle of the solenoid and everything and verify computer control. But now I'm thinking I really don't need to do that. We saw what is obviously a five volt reference on there, clearly communication from the computer. So there's really no reason to do any of that, although it would be cool, I, I will admit, but it's not functional and I need to get this car fixed. So what we're gonna do is at this point, with knowing that there's functionality on this solenoid, the most likely explanation for a full advance is gonna be some type of oil control flow issue. So let me get this solenoid out and there's also, I believe, a uh, screen that we can clean out and see if this will improve some flow and get this thing working again. All right, well, we've got a little issue here and that is I've got the banjo bolt out. You can see the filter is not located in there, sometimes it stays in the recess. And the problem is, is I can look down here and there is no filter. I was trying to fish it out and realize that there isn't a filter in there. So it's already been removed. I am not sure if Paul did that or not, but pretty common, I guess, that people remove the screens and then just don't replace them. So the problem is now, if there's a clog with this system, it is going to be upstream of where this solenoid system is. Here's the solenoid, by the way. And the solenoid is perfectly clean and functional. So 
I will have to see if I can get some flush or something in there and see if I can flush this out maybe with compressed air and free it up if there's a clog. So we'll see what happens. All right, I did the best I can to clear out that oil system. So I do believe that there's flow uh, through where there should be. So whether I caused that with cleaning it out and fixing it or whether it was just already that way and we're not going to see any difference is yet to be found out. But I'm going to put this thing back together. We'll get the scan tool on, see if we've made any impact in that AVCS advance. The other thing is I did go to the parts store. I tried to find a screen to replace the one that has been missing. And it looks like it's going to be a dealer only item. So even if this is fixed, really Paul's going to have to replace that screen. Probably a good idea to do it on the other side. Also with the filter for the turbocharger as well. It's actually turbocharger sediment material that actually does tend to cause those screens to clog, at least from my understanding. And the other thing is replacing the copper washers to ensure there's no leaks. So he's going to have to do this over again anyway, um, even if I fix it. So let's get this back together and see what happens. All right, let's give this a try. Oh, wow. Holy smokes. Listen to that. Oh, my God. All right, let's get on the scan tool and let's check that valve advance. All right, there it is, right, left. So we're still a little bit high. I'd kind of like to see probably five or less. So it means that there's still a little more service to be done here. And I'm not sure if this has a learn on it or not. You know what we may do is hook this up to the scope and look at the control pattern. So uh, let's see if we can get this to advance. We'll probably have to drive the car but we may be able to do it if we get the RPMs high enough. Let's see. Wow, it sounds amazing. So it does look like we're gonna have to drive the car. All right, guys, sorry for the glare on the screen. Just wanted to show you this after driving around for a while. We do have both of our VVT angles at zero. Check out what happens when putting the car under load. Wow, this car actually is really fast. <laughs> Holy cow. Well, check that out. How's that for you guys? And right back down to zero on the idle. Wow, this car's got a lot of kick to it. I love it. All right, guys, that is a fix. All right, how about that? A free fix for our friend Paul. So what I want to do is uh, just a couple things. First of all, I want to really thank Paul in case we don't get to do the video with him later on. And that is what a great sport he is to be on here, especially when he thought there was a very fatal engine problem going on. His perspective is a lot different than ours. We need to keep that in mind and stay sensitive to that, that while we're all excited about what the murder mystery is and how a do-it-yourselfer is not going to use big fancy equipment in order to do this diagnostic. We need to keep in mind that from Paul's perspective, he's worried if he's going to be able to get to work again with his car and if he needs to buy a new car. So we got to be sensitive to that and what a great sport he was. So thanks, Paul, for being part of that. What I want to do now is real quickly before I put everything back together and I can still access the terminal for that solenoid, I just want to put the scope on real quick and just look at the control pattern. Our friend Eric O from South Main Auto actually saw the first episode and he volunteered to send me some data if it would be useful for the diagnostic. I believe he had trouble locating it or I, maybe it wasn't the right format since I don't have a snap-on scanner. And uh, either way, thanks Eric for volunteering to do that. But he did tell me some things that we're looking for. So let's just hook it up and take a look and then we'll close this out. All right, I will admit this is very surprising to me. This is uh, on a very rapid scale. So we can see we've got about a maybe a 10% duty cycle on this. And uh, by the way, we'll cover stuff like this and also variable valve systems on the pay channel at some point. Uh, those of you guys that don't need the pay channel, I guess y'all know what I'm talking about here. So let me see if we can do something to change this control. We didn't see it with the advance, but maybe we'll see some activity with the solenoid here with RPM increase. I 
this car needs to actually be driven in order for us to have any change in the advance and any change in the solenoid activity. That'll be the conclusion of this series. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this helpful.